Hello students! This video is the first of many more videos to come about your modules. This will focus on the explanation of solutions that we presented on the problems in your module. But of course, we will also touch on theoretical aspect of your module. So let's get started. First, let's talk about the characteristics of an item of property, plant, and equipment. PPE is tangible, meaning it has physical substance. PPE are used in production or supply of goods or services. A delivery truck is used in delivering items to customers, so used in business. An office building is occupied so that clerical and other office activities may be carried out. A particular item cannot be classified as PPE if it is not used in business. Next, expected to be used during more than one period. So for example, you bought a particular item that can only be used for one year. It cannot qualify as PPE, although it can still be an asset, but it could either be supplies or other current assets. Next, the following are recognizable items of property, plant, and equipment. These are the common items, but of course, not limited to the list. Initial measurement. Property, plant, and equipment is measured at cost. Cost includes purchase price, directly attributable costs, and dismantling or restoration costs. A note about purchase price. It includes import duties and non-refundable purchase taxes, but it will not include trade discount. Directly attributable costs are costs that are necessary in bringing the asset to its working condition and location. And you have the examples down there. And last, if you are required by contract to dismantle or remove an item of PPE by the end of its life, you should include the cost of restoration or dismantling in your PPE cost. More about initial measurement. What does cost mean? It simply means the net purchase price, meaning net of trade discounts, directly attributable costs, and dismantling costs. That should be your initial recognition already. Next, the main event of our chapter, the modes of acquisition. So what are the means for which we could own? an item of PPE. They are cash basis, on account, installment basis, issuance of share capital, issuance of bonds payable, exchange, trade-ins, donations, and self-construction. First, to start off, cash basis. It's really practical what could be included as cost. Well, you have your purchase price. And anything that you will pay for directly attributable costs. So, of course, there is also one thing that could be included here. And that is your restoration costs. Modes of acquisition. The first one is on cash basis. So, this illustration is taken from your module. High-speed company acquired a machine from a machine developer from 1,200,000 to cash. The company incurred non-refundable purchase tax of 200,000 and also incurred 20,000 for transportation and 60,000 for site preparation. If I'm going to capitalize any of the four, which one should be included? If I'm going to answer number two. Of course, you have the 1,200,000. You also have the non-refundable purchase tax of 200,000. These two are components of purchase price. And then the 20,000 plus the 60,000 
These are components of directly attributable costs, and they make up the total cost of 1,480,000 for your machine. So, solution? 1,480,000. And of course, to record all of the costs, your entries would have to look like this. Next on our list of modes of acquisition would be on account. It also includes net invoice price just like on cash basis and directly attributable costs. It could also include technically restoration costs. However, one key difference when it's on account is the net invoice price should be less any cash discounts whether taken or not. It should be distinguished that cash discount is for prompt payment and differentiating it from trade discount which is outright not recorded. So cash discount for early payment availed or not is not included in the cost of PPE. Also there are two means of recording credit acquisitions with sales discounts. Depending on company policy it could either be cross method or net method. However, it is important to remember that if whether you use gross or net method, the amount of property, plant, and equipment that you should be capitalizing should be the same. Here's another illustration from your module. This time, it is about on credit or account basis mode of acquisition. So the problem is, it is now asking us the following requirements. The required journal entries to record the acquisition of the machine. Now between gross and net method, there will be a difference, of course. Gross method will record the entire invoice price. Uh, let us look at the problem. Where is the invoice price here? Uh, acquire the machine from machine vendor for uh, this one. That is your invoice price. Initially, this transaction under gross method will be recorded at 1,200,000. However, for net method, it should only record an amount which is net of the discount, which is, in our problem, 2%. The term credit is 2%. So I already did the calculation earlier. 2% of 1,200,000 is 24,000. Which if I deduct that from 1,200,000, it would give me the following amount. So for number one, the recording of the 1,200,000, there will be a difference on that. But let's examine the entire problem first. Uh, the company also incurred 20,000 for transportation and handling. Classic, directly attributable costs. 60,000 as well, this is for site preparation in the same light. Uh, 20,000 and 60,000 will not be recorded differently between gross method or net method. The only thing that would be different here is the 1,200,000 treatment. So let's go right ahead. The answer for number one gross method would be here. So, one, two. And 80,000. So initially, what amount would be recorded is 1,200,000 plus 80,000. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, you mentioned earlier that you should record machinery or machine always at net of the discount. How come it is not yet net of the discount? Relax. Pupunta tayo dyan. Balik. Gross method. Requirement number two. If you paid it within the discount period, for example, uh, January 1, and then you paid on January 5, it's still within this credit term. What would be the entry to record the payment within the discount period? By the way, you can pause the video anytime if you are going to try and solve it for yourself. But of course, guys, <clears throat> no peeking. This is found in your module. This is found in your module 1, 
Canvas course? And the answer, number two, gross method within the discount period payment. Ito po. So, observe. The accounts payable that we set up earlier is completely extinguished by paying cash of 1,176,000. However, since this is the only cost we paid, you will have to reduce your machine by 24,000. Think about it like this. The machine is supposed to be recorded at cost. And cost means for purchase price, how much do you pay for the machine itself? Okay, for the machine itself. So the 1,200,000 that we initially record is not actually the amount of purchase price we paid because the only amount we paid is 1,176. See here, 1,176. That should be the amount that we will credit, uh, that we will debit as PPE or machine in, in our case. So it goes, machine of 1,200,000 minus 24,000 credit, you should arrive at the correct amount, 1,176. Okay, so gross method, entry to acquire, gross method if the payment is within the discount period. Now your question, another question could be, what if we pay beyond the discount period? What if di ka na naka-avail ng discount kasi tamad ka magbayad? January 1 mo binili, January 30 ka na nakapagbayad. It's already almost due. Di ka na makaka-avail ng discount, of course. So, what if the situation is like that? Your entry to record the payment should be eto. Requirement 3. So, to cancel out, uh, take note that requirement 2 and requirement 3 are two different scenarios. So, right now, uh, beyond the discount period, let us disregard any information that we see here. Let's view it like this. Requirement 1 is when you acquired it and requirement 3 is when you paid it beyond the discount period. Now, 1, 2, gross method, of course. And then when I paid it beyond the discount period, how much will I pay? 1, 2 pa rin. Kasi po, beyond the discount period na siya. However, it should be noted that even if you did not actually avail the discount your ppe item should have the same cost of 1176 take a look at this 1,200,000 debit and payment beyond the discount period you also have a credit 24,000 to your machine why is that so because you lost a discount. Uh, ganito po nga kasi ang treatment eh. Uh, yung purchase discount lost is treated somewhat like interest expense. Kasi hindi ka nakapagbayad on time, na charge ka ng additional cost. So treat this purchase discount lost as something like interest expense. Pero actually in your financial statement, it will be presented as other losses. Sir, 1 to ang binayaran natin for the equipment? Ay, for the machine? Answer, no. Ang ibinayad mo para sa machine is still 1176 kasi po ang additional na 24,000 that is for interest which we will charge to purchase discount loss. Ano ulit? 1 to itong 1 tong ito 1176 of that is for the machine and the 24,000 is for interest okay that's gross method now for net method take note net method we will not be recording any discount from the start so that means this 1,200 invoice price will not be recorded as that Rather, it will be recorded as net of 2%. Meaning, 1,196,000 will be the entry, 
credited to accounts payable and debited to machine. Like so. Answer. Entry, machine, 1,176,000 and a credit to accounts payable, of course. And you have the directly attributable cost. This is the same as earlier as it is not part of the invoice price. Next requirement. What if we paid within the discount period? This is a simple case because we recorded 1176. It's already net of the discount. And if you pay within the discount period, you don't need to ever record any discounts because you're not paying for more than 1176. It should go like this. So requirement two, it is simply a cancellation of the first entry here. Requirement three. The required journal entries to record payment beyond the discount period shall again have purchase discount lost. Observe. Accounts payable is debited. That is to cancel the credit to accounts payable. Take note, you are not looking at requirement 2 anymore. The events go like this. Acquired, paid. Okay, requirement 1, requirement 3. So, acquired, 1176. Nung binayaran mo, 1-2 ang ibinayad mo. Again, children, take note. The cost of the machine is still 1,176 because the additional payment of 24,000 that represents interest. Somewhat like interest pero it's purchase discount loss, it's a loss account. Okay? Net method or gross method. The same ang cost ng machine. This is for net method. Ito naman sa taas is for gross method. Take note, that's 1176 plus the directly attributable cost. Pareho yan. So that's it for this episode of your module illustrations. In our next episode, we will be taking up installment basis issuance of share capital and of bonds payable and in future episodes as well we're going to cover all of these of course do not forget to click on like and subscribe and click on the bell icon so you get notified when that episode comes up and this has been your sir kevin walidan thank you for watching and see you on the next one